I started out yesterday to discuss what the self means in Hindu philosophy, the principle tattvam asi, that art thou, meaning that the self is the basis of all being. And being is not something into which we come, but out of which we proceed. In popular language, we say, I came into this world, as if you came from somewhere else altogether, from outside. But you don't. You come out of this world, just in the same way as the leaves come from the tree. And so in that way you are an expression of it, and the self meaning itself, self meaning identity, self meaning basis, ground, is what everybody fundamentally is. Then I went on to discuss the world as the self in the sense of the, the cosmos as the self, the great cycles of time in which, according to Hindu philosophy and mythology, the world is manifested and then again withdrawn. And now I want to go on to discuss the human world as the self. Well now, there have in the known history of mankind been about three types of culture. We'll call them hunting cultures, agrarian cultures, and industrial cultures. The hunting culture seems to have been the earliest. And agrarian cultures arose when hunters learned to farm and therefore had to settle in certain places. And it was then that men built cities. And when we pass from the hunting to the agrarian culture, we notice two very important changes occur. In the hunting culture, every man is expert in the whole culture. That's because he spends a good deal of time alone in the forests or on the hills. And so he has to know how to make clothes, how to cook, how to build, how to fight, ride, and all those things. But as soon as people become settled in cities, we get a division of labor because it's obviously more practical when you're all living together for some people to specialize in some things and some in others. The other important difference is the difference of religion between the hunting culture and the agrarian culture. The religious man of the hunting culture is generally known as a shaman, S-A-H-A-M-A-N. And a shaman is a kind of weird individual, and I mean weird in the ancient sense of the word, not queer, but weird in the sense of magic. Because he is a person of a peculiar type of sensitivity who finds initiation into the shaman role by going off by himself for a long time into the depths of the forests or the heights of the mountains. And in that isolation, he comes in touch with a domain of consciousness which is known by all sorts of names, the spirit world, the ancestors, the gods, or whatever. And his knowledge of that world is supposed to give him a peculiar powers of healing, of prophecy, of uh, magic in general. The thing that you must note, though, about a shaman is that his initiation is found by himself. He does not receive initiation from an order or a guru. On the other hand, the religious man of the agrarian community, 
is a priest. And a priest is almost invariably an ordained person. He receives his power from a community of priests or from a guru. In other words, from tradition. Tradition is all important in the agrarian community. Now then, reasonably enough, the first communities are stockaded enclosures. They are made of palings. And so we speak of people being within the pale and beyond the pale. And we cross the word paling we still use in fencing, and you know that the Spanish for a tree is palo. So here is a primitive stockaded community. And as often as not, this community will settle at a crossroads for obvious reasons. Where roads cross, that's where people meet. And so it's liable to have four gates and these crossing main streets. And that immediately establishes four divisions of the city. And so oddly enough, in Hindu society, there are four castes based on the four fundamental divisions of labor. And number one <coughs> is the caste of priests, and they're called Brahmana. Number two is the caste of warriors, and also rulers, and they're called Kshatriya. Number three is the caste of merchants and tradesmen. And they're called Vaishya. And number four are laborers, and they are called Shudra. So those are the four principal roles in the world of settled humanity. It's interesting, I said people settled in cities because they had to plant. And there are many legends to the effect that what they were mostly concerned with planting were grapes for wine, and they cultivated vineyards. And uh, it's said of Noah that after the flood in the Bible, the first thing he did was to plant a vineyard. He knew which side was up. <laughs> so now, then those are the roles. Those are, uh, you might say, masks, as it were, of the Brahman in this game called the social game. Now then, <coughs>